I found this written on a sheet of yellow notebook paper on the floor when I moved into my new house. My landlord informed me that the previous homeowner went missing under mysterious circumstances six months before I had bought the house. I'm posting this here as a reminder to always be careful online. Sometimes, following your recommendations can take you to weird places. After finishing my shift late Saturday night, all I felt like doing was collapsing on my bed and watching some YouTube while I fell asleep. As soon as I got home, I slammed the door shut and tumbled into my bed. My eyes were almost closed as I unlocked my phone and picked out a random video on my recommended page. The video was by some channel that I had never heard of, and was some sort of pulp fiction narration or creepypasta reading. I'm not usually the one for creepy stories. I much prefer watching more lighthearted videos in my free time, but on this occasion, it didn't really matter what I was watching, since I was so out of it already. I'm not really sure why, but it just feels wrong to sleep without noise in the background. Ever since I was a kid, I've always had some sort of sound going while I slept. When I was three, my parents bought me a white noise machine, and I used that up until I got my first cell phone. If the noise stops or gets too quiet, I wake up. I've never known why, that's just the way that I am. Anyway, I always have autoplay on so the sound doesn't stop for too long. I guess it doesn't really matter what ends up playing, since I'm not really watching it, but it's a funny thought. What kinds of videos play while I sleep? What if the audio enters into my mind and implants dark, subliminal thoughts in the night? Maybe I'm just being paranoid about that, but whatever happened mere minutes ago has me shaking. It's the reason I'm typing this out now, scrunched up behind my bed's headboard. At some point in the night, I woke up. It must have been around 1.30 in the morning. I noticed that I could barely hear the video, which must have been the reason my sleep ended so abruptly. I groggily opened my eyes and sat up. I saw the dim light of my phone screen shining up from the floor beneath. I groaned and picked it up off the ground and saw the video that I was on. It was a video with zero views. I wondered how many videos it took for me to get here. The first video I had clicked on had about a hundred thousand views. The video title was Nighttime Exploration. The description consisted of only one word. Hey. Confused, I tapped on the screen. That's when I noticed that something was wrong with the video. I could see the amount of time that I had already watched, but not how much was left. I had only been watching it for 9 seconds, but I had no idea how long the full video was. At first, I wondered if I was actually watching a live stream, but thoroughly examining the description and everything around the video, I found there was no indication of this being live. I decided to watch it, because I was awake by now and fairly intrigued. I had to stare at my screen for a few seconds before I realized what I was looking at. The camera was pointing at a door. More specifically, it was pointing at the doorknob. The video was oddly silent. I had to crank up the volume to the maximum to hear anything at all. What I heard was breathing. The breathing was presumably that of the cameraman. It was scratchy and deep and sounded uneven, like he had run several miles to get to the door. I almost skipped to the next video on my recommended when I saw nothing was happening. But right as my thumb was hovering over the next thumbnail, 
I noticed something on the screen. The camera shook as a hand, which belonged to the cameraman, emerged into view and wrapped itself around the doorknob. The hand seemed larger than normal, and it was wearing a black glove. The glove had rubber on the palms and fingers, which allowed the hand to open the door. As the door swung open in the video, I heard a small squeal come from my phone speakers. And at the same time, I thought I heard a similar noise come from downstairs. I quickly turned my volume all the way down, but I didn't hear anything else. I figured I was just being paranoid, and I turned the volume back up. The door was now open, and the building, whoever this was that had just stepped in, was dark. Clearly, it was night on the video too. We appeared to be in the entryway to a small house with a small hallway leading to a small living room, in which stood a flight of wooden stairs. Everything was extremely difficult to make out, since the video was so dark, and since I was sitting in a dark room myself and was still drowsy. Luckily, the mysterious cameraman stood still for long enough in each place for me to take a good look at it. If he hadn't, there was no way I could have properly observed everything in the frame, since, as I soon realized, there wasn't the option to pause the video. The small triangle in the middle of the screen was grayed out, and it didn't work for some reason. Again, I thought this was odd, but I didn't really think about it. I was so tired and for some reason, I was extremely curious as to where this would go. The cameraman began walking slowly through the hallway. His breathing became even more labored as he moved, covering up even the sounds of his footsteps in the video audio. Again, I thought that I heard noises coming from downstairs, but I tried my best to ignore them. That was a mistake. As the man moved through the dark house, I began to notice some striking similarities between the house in the video and my own place of residence. The layout of the house was very similar to mine. The living room and these stairs were in the exact same place as mine were. What really scared me was what happened when the gloved man reached the end of the hallway. Right next to him was a long mahogany cabinet. The cabinet was the exact same as the one my grandmother had given me when I had moved in a year ago. And on it was the old green vase that I bought when I first got the cabinet. That was it. This was too uncanny. I looked up and realized that I left my door wide open. It was pitch black in the house. The only light visible was that of my phone screen. I felt a weird chill run down my body, despite being wrapped up in blankets. I wanted to believe that this was all a nightmare, or just some weird coincidence, but none of it made sense. Everything was just too similar. I decided it was time to turn off the video. However, when I tapped on the phone screen to bring up the option to leave the video, nothing happened. I tried again, nothing. I was frozen on the video. I couldn't leave. At this point, waves of terrifying thoughts were crashing through my head. Part of me was scared half to death, and the other part of me wanted to believe this whole experience was somehow all my imagination. Yet somehow, I was still glued to the video, or rather, I was glued to the live stream, as I was now convinced this was. I still held on to some stupid hope that I was just going crazy, or was just being overly paranoid. For some reason, I kept watching. The man was now standing in front of the vase, an absolute terror 
I looked on as the gloved hand again appeared as the cameraman reached out toward it. For the first time, I saw the mystery man's arm. It was dressed in black, but the material his clothing was made out of was uh, difficult to determine. He slowly reached out and rested his hand on the smooth glass of the vase. His hand rested there for what felt like an hour, but was probably only a few seconds. His breathing only grew louder as he just stood there, with the camera pointing at the glass object. Suddenly, the hand raised up and forcefully shoved the vase over and off of the cabinet. He quickly moved the camera to show the vase fall into the floor. It broke into a thousand pieces on the wood and created a resounding crash. This was what broke me out of my trance. Because the noise didn't just come from the video. I heard it in clear as day from right beneath my bed. It was loud, and it was enough to completely wake me up and put me on full alert. I managed to turn the volume all the way down again with shaking fingers and picked it up. I beamed the light from the screen down at the floor, using it as a flashlight to see where I was stepping. I was too afraid to point it up at all for fear that the person who had broken into my house would realize that I was awake, or that I knew he was there. I carefully slid out of bed. Every sound seemed amplified in the darkness. As I slowly stood up, I listened out for any other noises in the house. I thought that I heard breathing and heavy footsteps, but that could have been my mind playing tricks on me. Now that I was sure someone was in my house, my imagination was running wild, trying to distract me. I began making my way toward the open door at the end of the room. My footsteps on the carpeted floor seemed to echo through the house, even though they probably weren't even noticeable from downstairs. I carefully dodged all the miscellaneous items that had been strewn about on the floor like I was traversing a minefield. If I made even one noise that was too loud, I would have probably have had a heart attack from the stress. I couldn't bear the thought of whoever was downstairs charging up at me. I managed to reach the door and started to close it. I went as slow as I could to avoid making a sound. As the door was halfway closed, it unexpectedly creaked. I quickly held the door in its place, too scared to move a muscle. I listened out into the house for any indication that they had heard it, but I heard and saw nothing. I painstakingly continued shutting the door. I had made it past the creak in the hinges and closed it silently. The door was now only barely cracked open and all I had to do was fully close and lock it. After much deliberation, I decided the best course of action was to just slam the door and lock it as fast as I could. I just had to hope that the intruder wouldn't break the door down. I sucked in a deep breath and closed the door all the way. In the complete silence, the sound resounded through the entire house. Still tense, I locked it and crept back to my bed. I felt slightly safer now that my door was locked. I sat down on top of all my covers and looked back at my phone. Now all I could do was wait and watch. The man was now in the doorway of my kitchen, panning the camera back and forth across the room. After a while, he took a step into the room. The camera turned to the right and revealed my set of kitchen knives. Again, the hand came out and grabbed the handle of the biggest knife. My breathing stopped. Sweat was pouring down my face and I was just hoping that this night would end. I had no idea why this was happening to me. I didn't know why I couldn't leave the video. All I wanted was to be alone in my house. By now I was wondering if the intruder knew that I was here, 
Maybe he thought I wasn't home or thought that I was asleep. I held on to some little hope that I had that advantage. But if he thought he was alone, why would he grab the knife? I looked around the room for any kind of weapon. The closest thing that I could find was the lamp on my nightstand. After confirming my weapon's location, I shuddered and checked the man's position. He was now walking through the living room again. I turned the volume up and leaned in, listening for anything. As I did this, I thought that I heard a faint chuckle. It was very quiet but noticeable. The intruder walked slowly through the room. I noticed that he was walking somewhat unevenly since the camera was shaking. I figured the man must have had a lamp. The cameraman's steps were so slow that I checked the clock to see how long I had been watching. I determined that I had been suffering through this video for over half an hour now. At last, the man reached the foot of my stairs. He laboriously lifted his foot onto the first step, then the next one, then the next one. I could see my door slowly come into frame as he ascended the stairs. He was climbing the steps to my room. I had never felt this level of fear before. The thought of an unknown assailant climbing these stairs right outside of my door shook me to the bone. I wondered what I would do when he got here. Would he try to break in? How would I fight him with nothing but a lamp? I couldn't call the police. My phone was frozen on this stupid video. I was trapped. It only took a minute for the man to reach the top of the stairs, but it felt like a thousand lifetimes had passed before he was at my door. The whole time, I could hear his footsteps as clear as day, only a few feet away from me. The video showed him taking a few steps until he was standing mere inches away from it, then angling the camera to point at the doorknob just as he had at the beginning. The video kept going for several seconds, pointing at my door. And then the video ended. The audio stopped and the screen was completely frozen in the shot of the doorknob. I could now hear the quiet sounds of a man's breathing on the other side of the door. I beamed the light from my phone down at the bottom of the door. Sure enough, two long, distinct shadows confirmed my worst fear. The man was standing at my door. Alone and out of options, I just decided to hide. And that's how I ended up here now, squeezed between my wall and my bed's headboard, writing this out on a piece of paper. My room doesn't have any windows. The only way out is through the door that my intruder is blocking. I can't leave. I've tried everything. I can't turn off my phone. I can't leave the video. I'm trapped. It's been hours and he won't leave. My only choices are to stay here or fight. And I sure as hell I can't fight him. If anyone finds this, I'm already gone. Please, just heed my warning. Be careful on the internet. You never know what you may find.